Welcome to Espresso Jams, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, life, and more. And now, here's your host, Joe Matz. Hello, this is Joe Matz with another episode of Espresso Jams. Today, I have the honor of having Scott Moore with us. Scott Moore is a business coach. He has been a business coach for 10 years. He helps business coach, uh, I'm sorry, he helps businesses and business owners grow in revenue, profit, and enjoyment of their business. And um, with that, I'd like to introduce to you, Scott Moore. Pleasure to be here, Joe. It's great to have you. And Scott, where where do you hail from today? Well, so I live just out, just south of Raleigh, North Carolina, and I've spent my whole life here. I always tell folks I come from a long line of people who were too lazy to go anywhere else. I'm a seventh generation North Carolinian, so. Wow, impressive. You, you like the water here or something. <laughs> impressive. And Scott and I have had a lot of conversations over the years. And one of the things that keeps coming up is comfort zones. And so we thought we'd in, invite everyone to, to share in our conversation. But what were we talking about recently, Scott, about comfort zones? Yeah, I think this is really important, Joe. Um, I have every one of my clients take an assessment called the Colby A Index. It was one of the very first things that I did when I shifted careers into being a coach uh, a decade ago. And um, at the time, I don't think I really fully understood its impact. But the reason I think it's so important is because we spend a lot of time as entrepreneurs by ourselves, or at least in our own heads. And our comfort zones will dictate a lot of what we will and won't do and understanding where we're drawing those boundaries and when we ought to go outside them and when we ought to take a break and rest within them is really important. I think because uh, as entrepreneurs, we get to pick how we spend a lot of our time. And so what we're going to pick is going to have a big impact on. uh, Are are comfort zones something that we're born with? I don't think we're born with them. What the, what the folks at Colby say, though, is that by the time your cognitive ability is strong enough to take the assessment, most of your comfort zones are set the way they're going to be for the rest of your life. So it's and, kind of like a nurture nature thing? Yeah, I, whatever components make that up, whether it's the environment that you're brought up in or some, something innate about the way that you're wired genetically, um, the, the takeaway is these things about you are really not going to change. And so adapting to them to the way that they are is, um, is really important. And that said, I mean, people stretch their comfort zones all the time. I did a, a bunch this year mm-hmm. and you get comfortable with, with other things, but you still tend to stay within certain lanes and certain patterns. Okay. So there are certain themes that continue through, even if you expand your comfort zone. Exactly. And I'll talk through like some of the areas that that assessment um, measures uh, to help you gain an understanding. So the first thing that it measures is a thing called fact finder. And I find this to be a really significant and usually fairly visible area that we have a comfort zone around. So um, this is how much information do you prefer to have before you're comfortable making a decision? Mm. And this can vary somewhat based on the decision. Like you might get more information when you're buying a house than you do when you're buying a microphone for your computer, right? Because those are gonna have different magnitudes of impact on on your life. But it still tends to be a pattern that people either want less information or more information. People who are low fact finders tend to say a lot of things like, um, can you just get me to the bottom line? And people who are high fact finders say things like, where can I learn more? Or are there some good books you could recommend about this? Because they're hungry for more information. And this is really important to us as business owners because we need to make good decisions, but we also need to make quick decisions. Like there's a million things that we're in charge of and we have to make lots of decisions. And if we take a really long time to make them, then we're probably falling behind where we could be in our business. So um, that's one of the reasons I emphasize uh, this one a lot. My experience is with having worked with with dozens and dozens of business owners over the years is um, generally entrepreneurs tend to trend toward being a little bit low fact finder. And so sometimes one of the ways I support them is to 
have them surround themselves with people that tend to go a little bit deeper on information. Uh, good business attorney, good accountant, people like mm -hmm. that can support you when you just want to like, you see that long uh, form you have to fill out and you just immediately start to, to shy away from it. Right. Another area, yeah. of the second area in the assessment is called um, follow through. And this is not exactly what we think of about, you know, like we always talk about good follow through is the key to having a good business and stuff like that. But follow through really means how long do you like to be in charge of a particular uh, area of work? So, you know, the low follow through people like to touch it very briefly, do their part and then hand it off and they tend not to think about it anymore. And the high follow through people tend to wanna to have their fingers on it a lot during its entire process all the way from start to finish. So with these two assessments you've spoken about so far, there's no right or wrong, in, right. is it? Is it, is it about working with the cards you were dealt with, but then expanding that? I would say it's or, about understanding what your comfort zones are and then figuring out with the, the business that you're working, working in, is that gonna be sufficient or do you need to expand your team into these other areas, right? Like an easy way of, uh, of sort of creating an example around this is like, if you're really introverted, like maybe you, you own a CPA business because you were a really good CPA, but you're just not that much of a people person. You like sitting at a desk with lots of numbers. That's where you're comfortable. Well, at some point you probably had to either hire or get your butt out of the chair and go do some marketing to fill out your business. And that's just an example of, did you decide to stretch your comfort zone, which is, you know, you, you went out there and, you know, go to, go to various meetings to help introduce yourself to people to expand your CPA service business, or did you hire somebody who was already in that comfort zone to do your marketing for you? So it's knowing where your comfort zones are and then um, developing a strategy to deal with that, you either hire out where you're, let's say, where you don't have that competency or that comfort, or you expand your comfort zone. Exactly. exactly. Okay. I, I mean, I'm, I, I feel like I'm really simplifying it. No, it, yeah. it, it's not that complicated, really. But, you know, these, these things have a huge impact on what the way that we'll plan our day. And also sometimes our attitude around it. Like if you get up every morning to go grind out some networking meetings, even though you're an introvert, because you know, you feel like it has to be done. Well, good for you for getting out of your comfort zone, but also how are you showing up at those meetings? Do you seem like you want to be there or do you seem like it sucks to be there? Because if it's the latter, you're not putting a very good face on your business. And so getting clear about where do you need to hire that work done so that it doesn't show up, you know, out of alignment with the image you want to project is, is pretty important. Yeah. So we only spoke about two of, of the factors that you look at. I'm, I'm sure there are more. We're not going to get into those today, but could you just tell me how many there are in this assessment? It's a four, it's a four factor assessment. Oh, okay. Um, the other two, I'll just give you the names. There's quick start, which is usually a measure of um, how well and quickly you adapt to uh, change and uncertainty. And then there's implementer, which is a, uh, a measurement between do you tend to think in the abstract or more in the concrete? Um, Interesting. Okay. Very good. The, that, the thing I usually tell people about putting my money where my mouth is on this assessment is um, it's the only assessment results that I've ever gotten tattooed on my body. I have a, a tattoo there on my arm and <laughs> into that tattoo I had my, my wife did the art for it and she incorporated my Colby numbers because usually if I'm cranky or upset about something, it's because I'm outside my comfort zone or have been for a long time, or I'm dealing with somebody that's very different from me. And those assessments are, are tattooed right there on my arm so I can remember that that's what's driving me a lot. Very nice. I like the compass aspect in there. Very nice artwork. Compliments to your wife. Thanks very much. If you were to give our listeners something that they could grab a hold of and do or, or look into more in just 20 seconds or so, what would that be? Well, so one thing is... Um, you're going to attract or repel people based on how you are based on their own comfort zones. You can accommodate that somewhat. I'm just going to go back to the fact finder real quick. If they send you really long emails and you respond with really short emails, that's a high fact finder person and you're a low fact finder person and you're probably putting them off. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So understanding that and kind of mirroring their way of communicating will probably make them feel more comfortable. But at the end of the day, you get to be you as a business owner. And if you're going to just operate the way you're comfortable most of the time, that's going to feel really good, but you should be aware of what those, what those areas are. Excellent. Excellent. Very good tip. And how would someone get in touch with you, Scott, if they wanted to know more or look at your website maybe and learn more about you? Sure. Um, so uh, my email is scott at scottmorecoaching.com. And, and that'll be down on written down below. So don't worry about the spelling. You got it. And um, also, um, I host an event uh, that's all virtual right now, every Friday mornings that you've been to many times, Joe. It's called Triangle Business Breakfast. And you can um, get it. You can find us on Facebook at Triangle Business Breakfast. Um, uh, it's a very open and welcoming group. And um, we have educational speakers every week who talk about doing small business better. Yeah, it's a great meeting, even virtual. It's still great. So I, I would encourage everyone to get there. Well, one of my favorite things about it is since it's virtual right now, people that don't even live in the triangle can come visit us. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Very good, Scott. And thank you for being with us this morning. Great conversation. We'll have to do this again. Thanks. Bye now. Bye-bye.